What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV. Back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated, rising, welterweight, superstar, Mexican boxer, who is now placing himself in title contention, Virgil Ortiz Jr. He calls out two-time welterweight world champion, superstar, boxer, Showtime Sean Porter. Now, he claims that Sean Porter will do anything in his nature to avoid fighting Ryan, uh, Virgil Ortiz himself. Now, I did an interview with Showtime Sean Porter in which Sean Porter, I asked him about facing off against undefeated, rising, welterweight, superstar boxer, title contender, Jerron Boots Ennis who Virgil Ortiz gets a lot of comparisons to because they seemingly have come in at the same time, right? They're around the same age, you know, uh, they're on the same, in the same class, should I say. And with that said, a lot of people like to see Jerron Ennis and Virgil Ortiz. But with that said, I asked Showtime Sean Porter about Jerron Boots Ennis, in which Showtime Sean Porter stated that I am staying away from that guy 1,000% unless I'm the champion, he's the mandatory, and I am in a position where I have absolutely no choice but to fight Jerron Boots Ennis. And because of this, I asked him, obviously, about Virgil Ortiz. He didn't go in that depth, so much of depth, as he did with Jerron Boots Ennis, but he just said, I like Virgil Ortiz, he's going to be one of the best upcoming fighters as well. But he didn't go in that depth like he did with Jerron Boots Ennis. Now, Virgil Ortiz doesn't possess the same skill set as Jerron Boots Ennis. Jerron Boots Ennis is a very big welterweight. Jerron Boots Ennis is very athletic. Uh, Jerron Boots Ennis has a ton of speed. He gets a lot of comparisons to former multi-division, iconic, legendary, Hall of Fame, world champion, superstar boxer, Roy Jones Jr., Jerron Boots Ennis, that is. A lot of people compare his uh, his athletic ability to that of Roy Jones Jr. Virgil Ortiz, he gets a lot of comparison to guys like, you know, um, Oscar De La Hoya, right? Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, you know, uh, guys of that nature, of that stature, right? Similar styles. Now, Oscar De La Hoya was very athletic for his in his own right, but Virgil Ortiz, you know, uh, is not that athletic. Now, Oscar De La Hoya wasn't as athletic as some of the guys he faced. He came off as flat-footed, stationary, and standing straight up. And that's what Virgil Ortiz possesses as well. Virgil Ortiz does have uh, power, a lot of power in both hands. Uh, he's strong. Uh, he puts a lot of pressure on you physically and mentally. But he hasn't fought that level of opposition as of yet, right? We're still waiting for Virgil Ortiz to have that big step up fight in his career. Virgil Ortiz is 16 and 0, 16 by way of knockout. People are tons of people, everybody, they get enamored with the fact that guys are power punchers, knockout artists. That is what excites the fans in the sport of boxing. He is uh, stands at five foot ten with a seventy inch arm reach, and he's only twenty two years of age. But uh, in his last fight, that was his biggest step up fight, in my opinion. That was against Samuel Vargas. Uh, he ended up KO with Samuel Vargas. He also knocked out uh, Mauricio Herrera, who gave uh, Danny Garcia a lot of trouble. So I personally uh, compare Virgil Ortiz a lot to Danny Garcia, uh, just that he comes forward more so than Danny Garcia. He's not. As of uh, Danny Garcia is more reactive. He's a counterpuncher opposed to Virgil Ortiz, who is active, right? So uh, Virgil Ortiz will be first. Danny Garcia waits on his opponent. So that's the only difference between, in my opinion, Virgil Ortiz and Danny Garcia. But that is the comparisons I most likely, I most compare Virgil Ortiz to uh, com currently right now within the sport of boxing. I think that he is a lot like Danny Garcia 
Uh, just that he's more active than reactive like Danny Garcia. Now, Jerron Boots Ennis is 26 and 0, 24 by way of knockout. He's 23 years of age. He stands at 5 foot 10. He has a 74 inch arm reach. So he has a 4 inch arm reach advantage over Virgil Ortiz. They stand the same height and they're about the same age. Uh, he has yet to have a step up opponent yet as well. Um, but when you look at Virgil Ortiz and Jerron Boots Ennis, you know, um, the skill set is abundantly clear that is Jerron Ennis athletic ability is off the chart. Virgil Ortiz is more, he's more so of, uh, he breaks you down lethargically. He's more mental and physical pressure. He puts a lot of pressure on you. Uh, so he is stating that Sean Porter, he believes that Sean Porter will avoid him, uh, by any means necessary. Now, Sean Porter, like I said, Sean Porter is 31 and three, one draw 17 by way of knockout. 33 years of age, stands at 5'7", 69 and a half inch arm reach. So Sean Porter is 10 years, uh, Virgil Ortiz elder. Uh, Sean Porter obviously was the world champion. He uh, he could arguably has the best resume in the sport of boxing, win, lose, or draw. You know, um, Sean Porter is going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Sean Porter is very physical. Uh, he's He puts, he has a similar style to Virgil Ortiz. He puts a lot of physical and mental pressure on you. So this would be an action-packed fight. Uh, now, like I stated, Sean Porter made it abundantly clear he has no interest in getting in the ring with uh, Jerron Boots Ennis. But when it comes to Sean Porter and Virgil Ortiz, uh, I don't believe that Sean Porter would so much uh, avoid Virgil Ortiz, right? Uh, I believe that this is a fight he would take if it makes sense. Sean Porter right now, at 33 years of age, he's looking to become a world champion again. He's the number one challenger for undefeated three-division world champion who currently is the WBO welterweight world champion, Terrence Bud Crawford, who is widely considered the best fight in the world. He's number one in the WBO rankings. He's Terrence Crawford's mandatory. He is also number one in uh, WBC rankings, which make him the mandatory challenger in a rematch for undefeated unified WBC IBF welterweight world champion superstar boxer Earl True Smith Jr., uh, he's also number two in the IBF rankings, which makes him puts him in line with Errol Spence again. Now we know uh, last year, September uh, 28th um, of 2019, he went tooth and nail with uh, Terrence Bud Crawford. I mean, excuse me, with Errol Spence Jr. And uh, I believe the 11th round knockdown for Errol Spence Jr. And then the, he clearly won the 12th round was the difference in the fight. He Errol Spence separated himself from Sean Porter at that point in time. So I believe that that was the difference in that fight. With that said, you know, um, he says that it excites him. It motivates him. Something fresh, something new, another challenge. Not that he don't want the rematch with Errol Smith Jr., but he's, def he's definitely interested and motivated to fight Terrence Crawford. So these are blockbuster fights. Virgil Ortiz has yet to fight... Um, you know, a serious, a former world champion. He's yet to fight, you know, um, a serious contender, right? Uh, he's yet to fight that big fight. For Sean Porter to go backwards at this point in time and fight Virgil Ortiz, who's 23 years old, who had, who's unproven, uh, it, it, it does nothing for Sean Porter. It's not a big money fight. Uh, as it, It's a big money fight. It's a big lucrative fight for Virgil Ortiz. It's a fight, you know, uh, for Sean Porter. It's you know, it's a statement fight for Sean Porter. Let the world know I'm still interested in just fighting the absolute best. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, accolades for Sean Porter, it does nothing for him. It does more so for Virgil Ortiz than it does for Sean Porter. And when Sean Porter is in the position to get a fight against Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford, who are considered 1A, 1B in the welterweight division, he could fight the absolute best in the division on pay-per-view in a big lucrative money fight that a world title was on the line because you have to understand outside of eight division world champion, Filipino iconic superstar boxer, who's currently the WBA welterweight world champion, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. If it's not Pacquiao, you got to go through L Spence or Terrence Crawford to, if you want to fight the best and for a world title, Errol Spence has two, Terrence Crawford has one, Manny Pacquiao has the other. So for uh, Sean Porter, Call, the call out to Virgil Ortiz on, to Sean Porter falls on deaf ears due to the simple fact that he just doesn't bring anything to the table for Sean Porter. It just doesn't make sense for Sean Porter right now to face off against Virgil Ortiz because he gain, he gains nothing out of it outside of uh, 
putting on the show for the hardcore boxing fans. I would love to see it because it would be action packed. Virgil Ortiz is not going to take a step back. Sean Porter is not going to take a step back. Now, Sean Porter is more versatile. Okay. We saw that when Sean Porter fought Danny Garcia, who I liken Virgil Ortiz to in comparisons. So Sean Porter more than likely will present the same style he did against Danny Garcia against Virgil Ortiz, unless he doesn't believe that Virgil Ortiz has been in this situation. He believes that pressure bust pipes and he wants to put a lot of pressure on Virgil Ortiz. Now Virgil Ortiz is much bigger than Danny Garcia, who's five foot eight. Uh, Virgil Ortiz has a, a 70 inch arm reach uh, and he stands at five foot 10. Uh, Danny Garcia is not that tall. He's not as rangy uh, as um, uh, Virgil Ortiz. But Danny Garcia has more experience. Danny Garcia was a unified world champion at junior welterweight. And he was the WBC world champion at a uh, welterweight. Danny Garcia stands at five foot eight with a 68 and a, and a, and a half inch arm reach, essentially 68 and arm, inch arm reach. So he has two inch arm reach over advantage over Danny Garcia. And he has two inch height advantage over Danny Garcia. So that might present Sean Porter slight bit of, you know, um, uh, issue, but for the most part, I can't see, you know, um, Sean Porter avoiding, uh, uh, Virgil Ortiz, uh, if Virgil Ortiz was a meaningful fight for Sean Porter. So Virgil Ortiz at this point in time is doing what he should do at this point in time, because he's looking to gain as much notoriety and as many big fights as possible. The problem is Sean Porter is in position for a world championship and he has he, he has two different uh, roads to becoming a world champion against the two best in the division, and you don't give up that position to fight a contender. So uh, I think that Virgil Ortiz callouts is what we like to hear. Hopefully, he keeps the same energy when he's in Sean Porter's position or when he's in Errol Spencer's position. Hopefully, that comes to fruition. But as of right now, I think that Sean Porter anyway would beat Virgil Ortiz. And I don't think that Sean Porter is avoiding Virgil Ortiz. But let's see how this all unfolds and how this plays out. But uh, that's all I got for y'all. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L. D B C shout out the new media shout out the black media role. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.